Good morning. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Uh, I just thank God for the day. I just thank you, Lord, for the day. And I just uh, pray in Jesus' name that you'll receive the things that the Lord has for you today. And many of you have been praying already, and you probably even heard some of these things yourself. So I just ask the Lord that may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord and my Redeemer, in Jesus' name. So thank you, Lord, for this great day, a great day to bring forth the Word of God in Jesus' name. So as you're watching here, there's, there's three things that we'll, we'll bring forth today. One of them is where we are. Another one's where we've been. And then what, are, what do we do about it? So those are just some interesting things there. I'll do my best. Uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, there's so much to deal with right now. But one of the things that I see that where we are, this we've just had a wake-up call. We've had a wake-up call that's very major. And, and I just uh, want you to really pay attention to the fact this is a wake-up call. You know, uh, I, I might go back to, to where we've been because, you know, one of the things I've learned in my prayer life, a lot of times when you're speaking to the Lord, you don't really have to tell him a lot about where you're at. He already knows that. What he wants to know is what are you going to do about it? You know, what are, where are you? How are you going to pray for this situation? What, the Lord wants to know your actions too. So that may be new to some of you, but... But drink it in, okay. Uh, where we've been, you know, uh, there's a great uh, video going around right now by a young pastor. I don't know how young he is out of Alabama. It's very powerful to give us a historic overview of the things that have taken place in our nation. And it can go deeper than that because I will tell you some things that, uh, that may surprise you. But, you know, the devil has been trying for a long time to get his hooks into this, the freedom of our nation. And during that period of time, uh, we've been hustling and bustling. We have, we've had wars. We've had this. We've had that. We've had great things happen in our land. But at the same time, uh, we just have really not paid attention to the, some of the things that have happened. I'll give you a little historic idea. You know, the devil brought in socialism at the turn of the 19th century. I mean, one of the first freedoms that he took away was our banking, because when the people set up our, uh, our nation with the Constitution, they never wanted a central bank like they'd come out of Europe, which seems to control everything. We moved on into that as some other things with uh, a lot of things in the 20s. Now, here's something may surprise you. I, I grew up in rural South Dakota. My mother grew up on a homestead not too far north of Black Hills of South Dakota in a county called Perkins County. When she was uh, somewhere in her teens, which means she was born in 1916, so somewhere in the late 20s, she was sent by neighbors to a communist camp in Huron, South Dakota. Now, you can believe it or not believe it. You think this is new? Do you think this is a new assault on our land? It's not a new assault. I, I have that as a personal testimony because it was my mother, and she shared that with me. When she got to that camp, before she got there, she and a friend got scared and ran away because they were afraid they might get arrested by, by whoever. So, so when you think about even, even this state of South Dakota, and it's not the only state at all, uh, these things were going on all over back in the 20s. Well, in the meantime, we have a president came along that was everybody's hero, but he added things that locked you up. He added the taxes. He added a lot of different things. He added a lot of socialism. And, you know, he was, everybody said, well, he saved our nation. Well, uh, possibly he did do some good things. We had a world war. We had a lot of things going on. But in another, let me bring you up to another date, another time. I have in my hands, my wife and I secured on, when, when I had a family member, not my mom and dad, now don't get me wrong, not them, but a family member passed away. In, in searching the things that were there, there was a socialist hymnal. I asked my mother about that socialist hymnal. She said, oh yeah, yeah, back in the 50s, uh, this man would come through to the neighbors and they'd have socialist meetings and they would have their socialist songs. So I'll move on from there, but at the same time, you need to understand this is something that didn't just happen. This has been a, a work of the immunists, the communist parties, the, 
the, they've been trying to take over America for a long time. So let's, let's just deal with it at that point. You've been told. And, 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 and then I want to say, where were the Christians? Where were you? You know, where was I? Well, we can say, well, it wasn't around 100 years ago, and, and that's true. <laughs> Some of us are getting closer. <laughs> but anyway, uh, point is, you know, the, 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 the way this was all figured out was, you know, well, you just go keep your church going, and you pastors preach real good, and we'll run this government. Don't you worry about us. We'll take care of things. And so, you know, you vote these people in, you send them off to Congress, and you think they're going to they're gonna take you where we need to go. They failed, brothers and sisters. They have failed across the board. There's some good ones there. There's some serious ones there. But too many of them look at it as a career. They can get a retirement pay. They can get all these things. Well, why am I saying all these things? You know these things. If you don't know them, you need to really face where we're at. You know, there's an old saying in marketing, if it's, up to, if it's going to be, it's up to me. So, you know, each one of us has to take a personal thing. Now, each one of us has our particular gifts and things that work that work we're groomed for things God had destined us for and so we need to take an account of that but we also need to realize this is our nation you know this is my nation I, I was reminded in meditating about this you know I thought about World War II a lot because it was a it was a real game changer earth shaking thing for our nation and the whole earth so but I got to thinking about young people you know, some uh, young kid with rosy cheeks sitting there around his breakfast table, and he's about 17 years old, and he's doing just fine. The war breaks out. The next thing you know, a year later, he's in major combat. Sometimes so many were, were being uh, killed, at, and maybe a year after he was around that nice table of his mother's, he maybe uh, been promoted in leadership, might be a young lieutenant. Uh, you know, and I thought about the same thing in college. Back when I was going to college, I had friends that w wanted to get an education, wanted to, you know, do some things with their life. All of a sudden, uh, maybe their father passed away. Well, they had to vacate the dream. They had to go back and run the family farm, the family ranch, and, and maybe the family business. So you see, these are life-changing. Well, brothers and sisters, if you don't know it already, what just happened is life-changing. And we have about so much time as Christians to get a hold of this thing and begin to see where is God in this? How can we, how can, uh, how can we move on this? How can we do some things that would really make a difference right now? Well, uh, you know, uh, one of the things I introduced here a few times ago, and this is just a start, but see this book. I want you to get start getting in this word and, and seriously know the answers are in the Bible. Now, this isn't the Bible. It's a prayer that avail much, but the scriptures, the prayers are scripture-based, every one of them. I, I'm not selling them, but I'm here to tell you, get, get a book like this. Don't go into some romantic, poetic prayers that people put out there and charge money for. Get in, because you know what? We have been assaulted. I got to thinking about one time when I was young, I was with a person I, I knew, and he called me a name I didn't like. Well, you know, here I'll never forget this lesson, because when he did that, I reached out and slapped him across the face. face. He came back with a left hook that put me on the pavement. That's where we're at, brothers and sisters. We've been playing patty cake with our Christianity, with our church life. We've been praying patty cake with it. And the devil has come back with a left hook. And he showed us that we could be locked up. But guess what? He, d he doesn't have that right. And, and if you'll believe what I'm saying and other men and women of God are saying right now that know him, uh, then you'll want to know how to take a hold and, and do this. Now, in, in preparing for this, the word that came up to me was a, a word that uh, came up in uh, it's Jesus, and it was in chapter 13 of Luke. I just want to read this to you because I, the Lord really inspired me in the last several hours about this scripture and in verse 10 he said and, and Jesus was teaching in the synagogues on the Sabbath and behold there was a woman who had a, a spirit of infirmity 18 years 
and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. And he laid hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And, of course, uh, here come, here come the, the other side. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days that men ought to work, and so on, blah, 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 blah. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth thou not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom the Satan has hath bound, though eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? You see, this I saw this, and I just heard those words, Woman, be thou loosed. I, I heard the words, America, be thou loosed. I heard the words, flag, be thou loosed. Now, this is up to you and me. We need to get a hold of this. Now, what, what's this loosed all about? Well, Jesus said at another time with Lazarus, he come out with his grave clothes, and Jesus said, loose him and let him go. What that meant? I mean, they popped off and they were loosed. Where do we get this? Bible, in the Bible, in, in uh, Matthew 16, 19, he introduced binding and loosing. Say, well, isn't that, you know, what is that all about? Well, you're going to have to find out because he's speaking and I, he said, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever thou shalt earth and sh uh, shall bind on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What's he talking about? You see, you, you listen to some of these preachers on TV and they say, well, God's in total control of everything. Well, if he's in total control of everything, why did he tell us? Why did he give these keys? Because he wants us to use them. He wants to use these. In Matthew 18, 18, he says it again. I'll read this uh, King James Bible. Whatsoever ye bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever ye loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You see, there's also the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and the Lord's Prayer has got to do with your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm telling you, there's peace in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. People, it's a, heaven is heaven. And God's will, he's saying, you know, the people said, well, teach us how to pray, Jesus. He, he, he said, this is your outline. This is how you pray. pray. Pray the will of heaven be brought down to the earth. The will of God is right now that you stand up and you start learning some tools. If this is too heavy for you, uh, you know, I, I, I can't apologize because this is, this is what's in, written in the word of God. He's given authority. You can look this up. Uh, he gave the disciples in Luke 9. He gave, said, I give you uh, authority over all power of the enemy and to cure diseases. In Luke 10, 19, he said it to many, many more people, all, really all of us. He said, uh, behold, I give you authority over serpents and scorpions over, and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. That's a pretty heavy word right there, but the thing is, we have a nation to protect. There's a devil rolling around through people right now that want to take you over. They want to lock you up. I thought about what a sanctuary was. You know, sanctuary is a great place of peace. I mean, we think of sanctuaries, uh, think of that nice church sanctuary you have. Well, most of the time, they're a great place of peace. You look them up in the in the dictionaries, it's talking about a peaceful place. But then, you know, I had to think about it. a lot of my neighbors out here in South Dakota. They're American Indians. They've been on sanctuaries, which are also called reservations. They're locked up. Do you know in this last three or four months, do you realize that the, the, the powers that be wanted us locked up? And I'm saying, be thou loosed. Be thou loosed. How do we do that? Well, we begin to speak to some things. We begin to deal with some things. Uh, you know, bottom line is I, I have to look through some notes, see if I've got any notes to cover this. Well, I might, I might just have some notes here. In fact, Psalm 115, you've got it in your Bible. And by the way, get rid. You, there's a lot going on on Facebook about the NIV. I'm telling you, get rid of it. The, the man that makes that up right now also makes... 
stuff that you don't want to know about if you haven't read about it. There's not, there, it's inaccurate over almost 2,000 times you've taken away the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get rid of it. Get a new King James. Get a King James. Get something like that that's got some power to it. We need power tools right now. We don't need to play games with with the uh, church any longer. We need power games, and I'm telling you, there's some pastors rising up right now to, to lead you into this, and you you go find one, because there, there's some good men out there and women uh, preaching this gospel. There really are. Now, in Psalm 115, 14 through 16, may the Lord give you, and I'll pray this for you, uh, may the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. 15, may you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Pay attention to this 16. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth he gave to the children of men. You see, we have a responsibility. Uh, until uh, something called the earth leaves, if you haven't heard that before, but it's a couple thousand years from Jesus, there's going to be a time when the door slams on all this stuff. We're going to see some things. You've heard about the great tribulation. It's going to happen one of these days. But at the same time, you need to understand that, uh, that we have a responsibility. This is our earth. I mean, if you're a farmer out there, who plows your field? Who runs off... Uh, you know, varmints from your field. It's you. You're in control of that. But see, we all have a dominion working through us. Now, that can get into a big subject, and, and other times I'm going to pound on that pretty good because I want you to know who you are. I want you to know what's yours, and I believe you do too. But I, I get back to this. We've had a serious wake-up call, and we've seen what the enemy could do through some of his cohorts to lock the people up. It's still happening as we uh, speak this out today, but in Jesus' name, uh, we, we can do something more about that. Um, now, uh, Might be out of notes, uh, but you you see, <laughs> this can happen, you know, when you don't have very good notes, or it can happen when when you know. I I just I just pray I just pray that this is coming into your ears and you're hearing what I'm trying to say. I I I'd say you know. Another scripture that really made a difference for me in trying to understand this dominion stuff uh, and what it's all about and where we fit into it. And, and you probably heard this scripture. If you're not, uh, you, you'll hear it right now. But it's in Matthew 8, and starting in verse 5, I'll read this to you. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he, and he goes. And I say to another one, come, and he comes. Do not do this. He does it. In verse 10, Jesus said, heard it, he marveled, it says, and to them who followed, he said, assuredly, I have say to you, I've not found such great faith, not even in Israel. What's the, what's the power of that? The words that come out of our mouth right now as we get a hold of this binding and this loosening. Now, what's that all got to do with? Well, first of all, if you're a cowboy or you're a farmer or somebody else, you have a horse, you have some kind of an animal tied up, you untie them, they're loosed. And you did it. Okay? If you're a calf roper, steer roper, like I used to do all those, you rope that thing, you run down there and tie them up, they're bound. I want to get a picture of binding and loosing. Bound. We have authority to bind the work of the enemy. Not people, but we can bind the work of those people, of those enemy working through people. I do it all the time. That's what prayer life's all about. That's what intercession is all about. You, you learn to go after the enemy. We can't bind up people. We can't do that, but we can loose like Jesus did that infirmity. He took the power of that infirmity away from that person. Then he, then he just simply laid hands on that person, and that person was healed. That's where we're at with our nation. 
We go after these things. We wake up. We go after. We, we go after these spirits of darkness that are trying to entrap us and trying to deceive us into thinking that, that they are. No, 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 no. No, I'm telling you, we're not going to let that spirit of communism, that Chinese, that, uh, the Russian, all that stuff. Who wants that? You know, you talk about being having locked up for a few days in, in your wherever you're at. How would you like to have that be your life? I mean, that, that's what they do. If we, I don't want to paint bad pictures any more than I already have either, but if you want to visit North Korea, you want to visit China, you want to visit Russia, you find people today in Russia, even with the Christian churches operating in there, you'll still people that are locked up in labor camps in those countries, lots of them, for preaching the gospel, for loving our Lord. So we don't want that. Just say, just make that decision today. <laughs> I don't want that, but see, there's something we can do about it. And and what I, I really want to do, I don't want to come down on any other ministry, but when people just lay back and say, oh, well, God's in control. He'll make everything fine. No, you got to take another look at this thing. Sure, he's controlled some things. He's put you in, in control of the earth. Uh, he, sure, he's, he's in control of times and seasons. You know, when he's ready to make a move in times and seasons, it says so in, in uh, Acts 1, 6. You can read it yourself. That's, that's what... Jesus said he's reserved that time. So, yes, he's in control, but he's also in control of his word. When you speak this word out, either in your Bible or in this, when you speak that out, the word says that he watches over that word to perform it. He watches for it to come up. You can see yourself doing a scriptural prayer, see that that prayer going up to the courts of heaven, sitting right there before him around the throne of God, and the Bible makes it pretty clear those, those prayers stay there. They're like incense. They are, they are observed by our Heavenly Father, but he wants them done according to his word because that's where the power is. The power is in this word, and the power in this word comes out when it comes out of your mouth. Your faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you speak the power words, they go in your ear, they go in your heart, and the next thing you know, you feel differently about your Christianity. You think, man, I do have a say in this United States. Yes, you do. And I want you to take that say. I want you to rise up. God wants you to rise up. I mean, I, we could go into a lot of other scriptures, but it doesn't make any difference. There's, they do make a difference. But, uh, but, you know, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you. The kingdom has to deal with you operating in his principles and the ones that you read in this Bible, not what you heard from somebody. You know, often people uh, hear things at Bible studies and they hear things from different things and they think they read it in the Bible. But no, you may not have read that in the Bible. I could give you a lot of those different things. But the main thing is I want to bring back to you, Be Thou Loosed. Be thou loosed. And then when you're speaking out there, when we're over this, and you take this to heart after you've heard this, you need to go out there and see that beautiful American flag out there, and you say, flag, you be loose from this oppression. You be loose. That, that, there's glory in that flag. The Spirit of God is in that flag. I, I believe it because I, I know it in my heart. I've shared before uh, the first landing when those people came from Europe in 1607, and they laid hands on that cross and dedicated this to the Lord Jesus Christ. This nation was set apart to take the gospel around the earth and to, and to be friends of his people Israel. And that's why the devil hates us. He wants us out of here. That's why the nations, uh, a lot of the nations of the earth hate, hate Israel. They hate us. Who cares? God loves us. And <laughs> if God loves us, who else do we want <laughs> to be loved by? I, you know, sure, our neighbors, you're supposed to love our neighbors, and I will too, except those that are there to kill me. I'm not going to love them or those that are operating with that spirit. So praise God. I'll, I'll tell you, I hope this has been a, 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 an eye-opener for you, but also an encouragement because I, I just pray for you to be loose too. You know, there's things with people, and I, you, you've been assaulted in this whole three months, and some of you have lost friends, and I'm so sorry to hear about that. But I'll tell you, in that binding and loosing, and I just bind any for the work of that corner coronavirus, whatever that dumb thing is. I bind that thing from operating in your life and in your friend's life and in your family's life, and I bind the spirit behind it in the name of Jesus that's driven us into, into this 
place that they want us in a corner. They want to captivate us. They want to oppress us. They want us to do whatever they say, this political correct thing. Pay attention to yourself. We do not have to live with that. Political correctness came from the, the, the wrong spirit. It came from the spirit of the devil trying to corral us and trying to groom us into his camp. Forget it. The word of God is powerful and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. And so in Jesus' name, get this word going. Tune in next time, and we're going to have a lot more stuff. But I want you to excel in life. I want you to have what you are destined to have God wants you to have what what did that say there read that psalm to you he he wants you to prosper you and you increase more and more you and your family in Jesus name but you see the bottom line here is I uh, here's what the another one is is I hope in some ways you know we Christians can get really self-invested and we can take this word of faith and just kind of corral it around our own personal needs. Well, that's okay too, but at the same time, I hope this opens your eyes to your neighbors. I hope this opens your eyes to those around you that really need your love, but they need your fortification too, and they need to be introduced to this Word of God. And, and, and you need to share it with them. Uh, people, are op people are open right now to the word of truth, so praise God. Well, thank you, Lord, for the people that are listening today, and I stand with them in every aspect, in every aspect of freedom, Father. And I thank you, Lord, for the, for, for the freedom of your word and the power of your word working through them, through us, in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for a great outcome of this thing. What the devil meant for bad, God, you're turning around to a marvelous good. We'll take this wake-up call and we are going to step out of where we've been we're going to step out of our little nap that we've been taking and watching the world go by we're going to be proactive now so bless the people right now give them the tools give them the unction in the name of jesus hallelujah amen don't forget to to call us if you need prayer or messages and i gave that number before uh but I don't even, can't even think what it is right now. So, messages, if you'd like prayer, we want to pray for you. God bless you. Love you very much.